Morning. Ooh. Now you're awake, eh? Yeah, such a privilege. Thank you to Tim and Paula, elders, for allowing me to um, serve you today. Let me just start my clock. I was in, under strict instructions to keep it at a specific time. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, you... Yeah, anyway. And I'm just so being... I mean, I've got already a minute and 30 seconds down, and I don't know what I want to say, you know? Jeez, Lord. Don't worry, Robert. I won't disappoint you. Gave me the lecture this morning, you know? No. All jokes aside, this is what I see. I see that there are many of us living in the land of forgetfulness. Do you know this place? Let me explain it to you. The land of forgetfulness is the place where you no longer can hear yourself speak. It's the abyss. It's the darkness. It's the place where you are asking yourself, are you still there, Lord? Do you care? Am I important? Because I'm crying out, I'm reaching out, and I'm not being heard. I see this. It's not just a general thing. It's a massive thing, and the devil is using it. He wants you to remain in the land of forgetfulness. The place where you believe you mean nothing. The place where you think it's okay to live complacently. He loves doing this. He puts this in us. He makes us believe this, this thought, this lie. And he usually goes around my worth, my identity. He starts reminding you of the things in your past. He starts reminding you of the things that you've even done. Come on, guys. This is the world. We've all made mistakes, right? Thank you, Jesus, for his blood, right? But this is what he does. He pushes it. He, he pounds it in. He gives it to you. Because he doesn't want you to reach your maturity. He doesn't want you to step into your sonship and your daughtership of what it is to be a, a believer in Jesus. You see, being a believer, it's a cultivating a lifestyle. It's cultivating myself into Him. And you see, when I don't do this and when I don't live like this, I automatically put myself into the land of forgetfulness. In fact, Psalms 88 says it, the land of darkness. And if you go look up what that means, it means the land where God no longer listens a serious place, eh? And then there was silence. Sorry. But you see, he wants you to stay there. And this is what I got during worship. Worship was so anointed. The land of forgetfulness, the place where you don't matter, where you're reaching out, you're calling out. And the Lord's going to take you out of that place. Because there's some of us that have been asking and saying, Lord, where are you? What's happening? Where am I going? What am I doing? Where do I belong? What is the purpose for my life? You know, this is the common thing. We all think there's a purpose. There is. But the purpose can only be found in Christ. When the purpose is found out of my own strength, I will remain in the land of forgetfulness. That's what I see. So I want to read you something. Let me find it here. Sorry. Um, I had it open and then I was distracted. Romans 8. You guys know this very, very well. We all know our Bible, eh? For all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God, what are they? Can anyone tell me? They are the sons of God. That's what it says here, Romans 8. For all who are allowing themselves to be led by God, the Holy Spirit, are sons of God. For you have not received a spirit of slavery, leading again to the fear of God's judgment, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons. The spirit producing sonship, by which we joyfully cry, what do we cry? Ah, you know the scripture, don't you? The Spirit Himself testifies and confirms together with our Spirit, assuring us 
that we believers are children of God. Let's just stop there. The, the creator, the one that says, let there be light. The one that holds the power, he watches the world like this. You're his child. You're his son. You're his daughter. I mean, this is not Mickey Mouse we're talking about. You know, this is not Daffy Duck and all this. This is the creator. This is the real deal. This is the one that has the ability to build and to break down. This is God. And every one of you, yeah, sitting watching me today like this, he's got you like this. He's watching you. And you've forgotten. Many of us have forgotten. We don't think that God watches us. It's time to get back to simplistic, simplistic ways of the Lord, right? You are my son. You are my daughter. And I am your father. Listen to this, 17. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs also. <laughs> That's powerful. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his spiritual blessing and inheritance. If indeed we share in his suffering, so that may we also share in his glory. It's a tough one, eh? Because you know what? When you have to share in the suffering of Christ, the church is empty. You know, it's the truth. Sorry, let's talk about the truth. When you share in the suffering and you don't like it, that's the times when you run away and you try and make your own plan. Does a son run, not run to his father? Let's think, Jesus says, I only do what I see my father do and only say what I hear him say. Then you start going to Luke where it says, and the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted. Oh, but the Lord, surely, he loves me so much. He's not going to allow me to go through trials and tribulations. He's not going to allow me to face it. He does. Sometimes to get the best out of you, I've got to take you into the wilderness. And then when you're in the wilderness, you learn to hear my voice. You learn to start asking, Father, where are you? Because now I've been in the land of forgetfulness. And he starts showing you strategies. Come out. This is what you do. This is how you get out. This land of forgetfulness, it constitutes our being. It constitutes our marriages. It constitutes our, our finances. It constitutes everything in my life. And you see, if I'm living in a land of forgetfulness, I can take it all with me and let it live with me there, in the abyss, in the nothingness. And Jesus says, come out. I'll show you out of your calamity. I'll show you out of your financial problems. I'll show you out of your marital problems. I'll show you out of anything. But it's subject to the man. It's subject to you. It's a subject to me. You have to start seeing yourself as a son and a daughter. It's got to land in your thinking and go into your understanding. And when it lands in your understanding, it starts becoming part of your being. I mean, we can all say, yes, we sons, but do we really carry that authority? Do you really carry it where you go? Maybe not. Maybe today I feel like a son. Today I feel like a daughter because I'm in the house of the Lord. Great, I do. But tomorrow comes and my sonship is out of the door. The simplistic ways of Christ is to be centered on what He wants us to do, not on what I want to do. This is the reality that's clouding the worldwide church. This thing. This beautiful thing standing in front of you. Jared? This thing. It's the problem. It's the issue. Because it's this thing that wants it. It's things way. Oh Lord. Give me your purpose and your calling and your blessing. And whatever you want for us, all right, do that. No, I can't do that. 
doesn't make sense to me. It's real, eh? How many times the Lord has asked you to do something or asked me to do something, and you try and reason. And I just said to you, it's not Mickey Mouse, right? This is the creator. He's watching you like this. Hey, Jared. These are the sons. These are the daughters. I just want to see my timer here before I get the hairy eyeball, you know? What does the word son mean? Does anyone have it? It means ben. It's the Greek word, ben. Hebrew word, ben, sorry. It means the one that builds the, the family name. What are we sitting in here? We're all a community, right? We're a family. If I'm building my community, I'm living in line with what that name means. I'm a builder. I'm an appointed builder. I'm building my community. If I'm building this thing, I'm working against the kingdom of the Lord. If I'm building what is here, this beautiful thing, I'm working against God. Because we are to build this here. This is what it is. We are to think about those that walk on our right and on our left. That's what it is. It's to live for the benefit of others. Did Jesus not lay it down? Let's look at his life, right? He came as the Son of God in the flesh and decided, uh, Lord, in the Garden of Gethsemane, are you sure? Let this cup pass from my lips, Father. And he even sweated a bit of blood. Because he realized, whoa, this is a heavy price. See, there's a facet of Jesus we want, but we don't want it all because it might cost you your life. It's the reality of the gospel. And yet, we are to be imitators of Christ. I'm not saying now, please go to the Garden of Gethsemane here in Mams and Toti and say, Oh Lord, send me to the cross. He's done it for you, right? But it gives you a depiction of what is required. It gives you a depiction of who you are. Because when you start focusing on the blood, you start seeing your importance. You start seeing your value. You start seeing the authority that comes out of your mouth. You start seeing how, how powerful your words can be. You start seeing how powerful your thoughts can be. Your interactions with others. You know, the word says that we'll give an account for every word that we speak. Every idle word. That's a sobering thought. When I get to heaven, Jesus is going to say to me, Hey, Jared, why did you tune that lady like that that day? On that? So when, Lord? I forgot. I'll give you an account of it. Out of what motive of the heart were you operating, Jared? Because sons build the family house. Sons build each other. If that's Jesus, tell him I'm right here. <laughs> I'm here, Lord. <laughs> Bless you. They are the soldiers, the worthy ones. The ones that say, yes, Lord, I want to come out of the land of forgetfulness. Many feel like they're in the land of forgetfulness. Where it comes crashing over my head and I'm almost tasting death. I'm not talking about death where you're going to die. I'm talking about where everything in your life is destructive. Nothing works. Some of them do work and some things don't work. I have these constant worries, constant things. I get into bed and it's like the little cockroach in my head never stops running. Now can you imagine those little legs? <clears throat> Wake up in the morning, he's already tired because he's been running the whole night. The son knows where his place is. The son knows who the father is. The son is not worried about what's on his left, on his right and on his left. He's worried about one thing, to do the will of the father. It's hard. It's hard. 
Because to do the will of the Lord can cost you something. This is why I say, when we do the will of the Lord, He says, okay, in order for you to step into the anointing and the calling that I have for you, I have to chafe this out of your life. And when I start chafing, I can't do it. Lord, I cannot give that word to that man. I mean, I went through a time where the Lord said, you need to go and give this word to that person. And this person is an influential person. I said, I cannot do that, Lord. This man will think I'm a fruitcake. And the Lord said to me, if you don't, I'll send someone else. Because there's times and there's seasons, there's an appointment. There's a time of awakening approaching you. There's a time of awakening approaching you. A time of refreshing. That's what it is. This is why I'm saying these things. Because when it comes, understand your place. Understand your position. When the winds of freshness come blow over you, like acts speak, the times of refreshing, you're going to start thinking, oh, is this really the Lord? You know, when the Lord, the power of God starts moving, and people are like, no, this, this, is, this is not God. I'm telling you guys now, when those winds start blowing over your hair, if you have, and it's like waving in the hair, I mean, I don't have, so I don't know what that feels like, but you understand what I'm saying? Understand your place that you're a son, you're a daughter. You purchased with blood. Massively. So now you understand son, right? Do you understand it? Good. Let's look at the orphan. It's a powerful thing. Because the orphan is the one that never accepts his place. He always sees things through the filter of, I'm not good enough. It means I've never accepted Christ and what he did at the cross. It means that what I saw and what I believe in Jesus, that is not good enough to change my heart. He doesn't believe in inheritance. I'm not talking about your eternal inheritance when we go to be with our Lord and Savior. I'm talking about living in a time of inheritance here on earth. Your inheritance as a church is upon you. It's going to come like an awakening, refreshing wind. Anyway, I keep saying that because that's what the Lord says. These orphans, they have issues with lowliness, insecurity. We've read it in Romans. We're no longer orphans driven by slavery. You've got to look at yourself and say, I mean, I don't do this. Maybe I should. I'm a son. You know, you see, in the, sometimes you're watching the movie, you see someone talking to himself in the mirror just before he has a massive event. He's like, wake up now. You know, get ready, you know. Maybe you should start doing that. Wake yourself up. I'm going to fight now. No, 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 fight. But you get what I'm saying. Orphans, the mentality of uh, not good enough, uh, it's, it's never working. I can never make ends meet. I can't even pay the bills because it's not even that the Father won't bless you. It's just what I set my mind to. And when it lands in my heart, in my soul, in my understanding, I start living this thing. Now, you tell someone that they're useless enough, they are going to believe it. You don't need to tell them. If you carry on entertaining these thoughts that you're useless, you will believe it. This is why when this adversary, I don't want to lose my teeth here. When the adversary comes and he says to you, hey, you've got to say, excuse me, I'm a son. I'm a daughter. It's no longer time to watch to the left and to the right. Be, look at the Father. Look at what He has for you. If you don't know what He has for you, that's a good thing. Look at what he's done for you. Because many of us are like, but I don't know where I'm meant to be going. I don't know what I'm meant to be doing. You don't need to know where you're going, what you're doing. You need to deal with the foundation of my identity, my sonship, my daughtership. 
when you get to where you are going and what the Lord has said for you, these are the foundations that are always tested. The identity. Oh, the devil loves uh, to knock the identity, right? He loves to knock it. Nine minutes left. There's so much that I wanted to say and always never enough time. I want to read something to you. And this is totally off sonship and daughtership. It's just coming as I'm going, right? Exodus 7. It speaks. Exodus 7 verse 8 says, Now the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Work a miracle to prove your authority, then you say to Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, so that it may become a serpent. You know the story, eh? So Moses and Aaron came to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord had commanded. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and his servants and became a serpent. Then Pharaoh called for the wise men. Listen to this. Listen to this. Because as you progress forward, you need to be vigilant. You need to be awake here. You need to be sober-minded. So that's a biblical word, okay? I'm not talking about alcohol. I'm talking about alert. Then Pharaoh called his wise men, skilled in magic and omens and sorcery, witchcraft, soothsaying priests. They did the same with their secret arts. That's what the word says. As you progress forward in your sonship, there will be things that look like it's of God and it's not. Be aware. Don't open yourself up to that which is not of the Lord. It keeps this orphan mentality running strong. It keeps me seated in the land of forgetfulness. Because why? It blinds me. We are stepping into times, friends, where the working of the adversary it looks very close to the truth. And if you're not planted as the sun by the blood, it's dangerous ground. Orphans, they will settle for leftovers. They will settle for the scraps off the table. Who has settled for scraps off the table? Come on. Yes, you guys are blessed, eh? I have. Who has accepted less than what they know they should be getting? Many of us. Many of us have taken that which has just been given to us like this and accepted it as our truth. But you're a son. You're a daughter. You have the highest price above your head in the realm of the Spirit. Jesus says, and I saw Lucifer fall like lightning from heaven. All the powers of darkness shall not prevail against you. I give you authority over all the powers of darkness. Is that not in your sonship? Is that not in who you are when you are always being battered and bruised and kicked and told what to do? To speak with your mouth. I dare you as a son and a daughter to say, hey, get away from me. Hey, who are you? My name is Jared. This is who I am. I'm not going to take this. I mean, you're talking to me now. When there's that form of resistance, man, I'm going to go for it. I'm not going to sit and quiver and quake. and blah, 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 blah. I'm going to go. It's time to rise up. It's time to take your place. That's what it is. You see, when I'm so worried about what I can do, that place is waiting for you. It's like that chair. Let's just put a picture there. That chair that is yours is waiting for you, and it's empty. Because the day I start laying this thing down, I'll take that chair. This thing. This beautiful thing. Eh? <laughs> That's what the Lord is saying. A 
a son has the conviction to receive the father's finest within myself. I live it. I breathe it. I expect it. Why? Because it's mine. I've received every spiritual blessing. Ephesians says it. I'm a heir to the throne. I've received every spiritual blessing. Mm. Uh, those pages in that book, let's tear it out. Let me say it to you in a very, very nice way. Those that do not accept their sonship are basically saying to Jesus, I do not agree with you and what you did on the cross. How's that reality? May as well throw me in front of a bus. <laughs> like that. You are sons and you are daughters. And as the season approaches you, where there is a reference that are going to be laid in place, the Lord is going to give you the identity. He's going to show you the identity. He's going to require of you. And things in your life that is of the enemy, those things in life that are stealing from you, He will give you strategy. He will tell you what to do when you need to do it. But who are the sons of God? The ones that allow themselves to be led. The sons. You know, it's another great thing about a son. When he starts understanding his place and his position, and he starts seeing who he is, opportunities start opening like this. It's miraculous. It's not pie in the sky stuff. You hear me? This is not a pie in the sky preach. It's a spiritual principle. When I take my place, things move. 99% of people don't want to take that place. And you go through your life, you look at your rejection, you look at your past, you look at the things you've endured, the death in the family, the hurt, the abuse. I mean, it, the list is it's endless. It's endless list. And the, the clever vile of, the, of Satan comes and he's like, always points that very stupid thing that you did, that thing that you did, that thing. He loves it. He plays unfair. He loves to do that. You forget about it. Forget about it. Just tell him. You take your place. I'm almost done. I've got about a minute left, and then I'll get the hairy eyeball. Opportunities open, joy, you are successful. You know, we cannot equate success to how deep my pockets are. There is a joy and a success in living in God's presence. The fullness. You'll never experience fullness like you feel it in the Lord's presence. No more time to sit and accept leftovers. Leftovers, come on, man. In my house, we eat leftovers, and I ate it. My wife makes me, she's like, eat your food, you know. I'm just joking, she's not like that. That's who sons is. That's who sons are. That's who daughters are. The ones that are hungry. The ones that say, yes, Lord. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to work to earn my place. There's nothing. There's nothing I can do for you there. There's nothing you can do to earn your place. It's done. It's dusted. It's sealed. I don't have to get up today and sing the right song. And if I don't, oh, the Lord's going to hit me. That's not how he operates, man. When he sees you, he sees his son. It's a matter of perspective. It's a matter of how I start seeing myself. That's how it is. Let's close our eyes. Can we?
This is a very general question, and it's a very common one. I'm going to pray for those that have financial calamities. Who's having financial calamities? Lord God, I pray, Father, right now, and I ask, Lord, that you'll open up the heavens above these men and women. Those that own businesses, those that are in the workplace, Father, I ask, Lord, that you would restore. If, Lord, they are in the place by their own hands and by their own doing, I ask, Lord, that you would bring them out because you are gracious and you are merciful. I also see that um, the Lord is going to raise you up because of your humility. I'm talking to all of you now. He's going to raise you up. I'm going to read this to you. I mean, I, I haven't prepared this stuff. I'm just telling you what's coming, right? Sorry. I'm going to read this to you. In Psalm 86, it speaks clearly that you as a people need to ask the Father for a sign. It's not a sign like I don't believe you. The Lord is going to give you a token. Because he operates like it. He's gracious like that. When the Israelites went in to spy on the land, they came back with the grapes, right? He was so gracious, allowed that for the others to see it. You need to ask for a token. You need to ask for a token from the Father to show you. Today, when you get home, go sit with your wife or your husband. If you're alone, go sit quietly. Take each other's hands. Together in unity. And say, Father, give us a token of your mercy and your grace. It's not you. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to make it happen. Just ask in unity. Let's just bow our heads. Two more minutes. I just want to be obedient to the Lord. Bless you. I really hope that this was encouraging to you. You are sons and you are daughters of the Lord. And it's time to take the place. Change the mindset. Get out of the, the rut. The land of forgetfulness is not your place. There's a time of extravagance coming for you. There's a time of vibrance coming. Um, and you will quickly see in the season, as you're progressing forward, as there's a vibrance, you'll see those that want to hinder that. You'll see how the enemy will work. He will try and hinder this. Move forward. Look unto the Father. Your sons and daughters. Powerful sons and daughters. Own your, own your place. Take your place. Mm. Mm. There's no condemnation. I'm just seeing it on this side. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ. None. None. Whoever tells you that, send him my way. Please. 